Hi, this is Chris from Guitarist Magazine. And I'm Lee from Andertons. And we're here at NAMM 2015. Wait a minute, I'm Paul. Nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah, I was about to introduce oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we could, you know. <laughs> Leave all that in. It's good. It's okay. good. So, oh, it's go. a special year for Paul Reed Smith this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's our you 30th are... anniversary. There's pictures of this kid with long black hair all over the booth. A good looking kid. Yeah, Who it was is he? not me. <laughs> Actually, I remember what it, my experience was at the time, so, you know, in a way it was me, but it's our 30th year, and I normally wouldn't have done anything around the 30th year, because I'm always looking forward, not backwards, but they did a wonderful job going through the history of the company and how it all started and having the 30th anniversary models and the retros like you're holding, and it's just going very well. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the guitars that are going to be around for the 30th anniversary. But before we go into that, I'm always interested in, you know, what do you think about the sort of, the, you know, 2015, you think, oh, it's so much better than when I started. But also as well, what do you miss about, you know, what do you miss about the, you know, that, that Well, the small year? size of the company made it more intimate in a way, but it's very intimate now. It's actually, it's the same but different. Mm. And uh, what do I miss about it? Not a lot. What do I like about these guitars? You pull them out of the case and you could do a recording session or a gig without even going to the repairman. That I'm sure works. That I'm positive. We do it every Friday morning at 8 o'clock. We bring all the managers in. We open boxes just like you do and we go through them and make sure that they are recording studio and gig ready, which I think is getting a little lost in our industry and I don't think we've lost it I think we've got it so I'm pleased about that part if I take that guitar to a gig and plug it into my rig I'll be happy yeah well, that's a pretty guitar so what are the appointments then on, on a 30th anniversary that make them a little different to the for the ones from the year before well you've got the different inlay that, that's going up and down the different birds and it's got a beautiful uh, mother of pearl purfling that goes all the way around these are our new um, 8515 pickups um, that have a, a clarity to them without being harsh. There's no ice pickiness to them, but there's a lot of beautiful high end that comes out of them. And it, it's, it's finally all PRS. It's PRS tuning pegs, PRS nuts, PRS names, PRS birds, PRS shapes, PRS everything. It's not uh, any parts that we would just buy off, off, uh, off of somebody else's shelf. We make the rings. Actually, the rings are important. We've buried the screws in there so they don't you know, go up and down anymore when you're beating on the guitar. Um, everything from the knobs to the everything's proprietary and we're pleased obviously uh, you know over 30 years it's been a process of refinement and uh, you know you've sort of fine-tuned every element of the instrument but what, what do you think you know if you ever occasionally go back to some of the guitars from from the beginning when you pick them up how do you feel about them in hindsight I think most of the most of it was done beautifully and we have a thing called the PTC at, um, at PRS Guitars, the PRS Technical Center. And if you send uh, 87 back, we'll bring it up to date. No way. So, I th you know, I'm not finding any guitars that come back that need a complete overhaul. They just need a few, of, as you go, the bits changed. You know, um, it's going well. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with what's up. It's okay. What's, um, what's in, so this is a, this is a, a, a USA custom. What is, uh, what, what are the 30th anniversary appointments on things like S2 or SE? Well, same thing, the new same birds. Thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, S2 doesn't have a carved top, it's got a beveled top. I yep. mean, look, it's two-fifths the price of a, of a custom, so yep. um, you, you can't do all the same things, but you can certainly make one hell of a guitar. I mean, yep. that's fine. By the way, I don't think that we would be where we are without England's support. That, your country has been unbelievably supportive. Uh, Guitarist Magazine from the beginning and all the dealers from the beginning and the customers took us in open arms. That is very different than the English roadies that showed up that wouldn't talk to me. Uh, that was a very different thing. They were very protective of their artists. You weren't allowed to go talk to them, you know. So, well, it is what it is. By the way, that noise you're listening to are artists practicing for our uh, press conference coming up in a minute, and that's just the way it's going to be. Actually, I think it'd be quite interesting to talk about artists because obviously, you know, that's, you've worked that's so. Mark from Periphery. Well, you've worked so closely with, with guys over the years, and, you know, people like Carlos Santana, Mark yeah. from Periphery, a huge range of people. What, what do you think the process of working closely with those artists has, has brought to you, the way that you think about guitar design? Well, I see a guitar as a tool to do a job. And if you're not interviewing the artists about what they want, you're not getting anywhere. I mean, to do it in the dark's crazy. 
Um, this is a device to make music with and to have your tunes played on and or whatever it is that you're going to do with it. And if you're not interviewing people about what they like or don't like, you're not learning anything. It's a it's a two-way street. If they don't play your guitars, nobody's going to buy them from the stores. It's a, a symbiotic relationship. Carl Santana's playing our guitars. Says something to the market about the quality of the instruments. So I, Carl's just telling me what he wants constantly. Has there ever been anything that an artist has said to you that's completely kind of blown you away or surprised you with, what, with the way they've reacted to the instrument? Sorry, that's it. No, like not, spot, not yeah. really, but recently, uh, Vernon Reed, we made, we made Vernon Reed some guitars and he wanted it very, very veed in the back. Surprised me a little bit. I went and did it, he liked it. I did a good job being the neck. It's an art form doing neck carves. Um, really surprised me, blew me away. I remember Al DiMiola early, early on wanted a full rolling guitar synthesizer built in the guitar and I had to take the rolling synthesizer apart and put it in a guitar. That was interesting. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's the main thing. Well look, congratulations again on your 30th anniversary. You know um, something? It's congratulations to you guys for trusting us because your store has trusted our product to your customers. If you didn't trust it, you wouldn't sell them to the customers. I really appreciate it the well, other way great. around, too. Are you coming to England again this year, uh -huh. do you think? I'll be there in March, I think. Oh, fantastic. Well, let us know. You know, remember we did a big big show and we had about 250 yeah, people came to see? Well, we could do that again if you want. I don't want to put you on the spot. That's but between you and Jez. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's I will go it. and twist his arm now. Yeah, we twist his arm. Um, so, that was not a promise to come to the store, but <laughs> welcome to NAM 2015 and um, it's our 30th anniversary and I have gray hair and I'm growing a yarmulke and that's the end of that. <laughs> thanks, man. All right. See you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. So thanks to Paul there for doing that little impromptu interview. Uh, and now we're just going to whiz around the stand and show you the new stuff. And we're going to start with probably the most understated guitar of the entire show. The, uh, the 30th anniversary Paris Dragon. How many of these were you likely to order for yourself, Chris, do you think? Um, well, you know, it's, it's a difficult one to say, isn't it? <laughs> Minimum one of each, I would have thought. Um, if only I had the budget to do so. Even if you had the budget? I mean, actually, I don't know if you can come in close on here. There's only 50 of these for the whole world. They're about £10,000 each. Um, 40, I think, for the whole world. Um, and uh, you won't be surprised to know I, I won't be ordering one of these, unless, of course, one of you would like one, and then I will. But you cannot help but admire the fact that all the inlay is made up of thousands of different pieces of coloured, uh, you know, mother of pearl and different sort of coloured inlays here. Pretty stunning. Um, I've got to show you the neck on the back of this one here as well. It's insane. It's an amazing yeah. piece of wood, isn't it? It is insane. So there you are. If you uh, if you like Larry guitars and you've got ten thousand pounds burning a hole in your pocket. Okay, so now we've got Jez from PRS who's going to talk us through the 30th anniversary SE Custom 24. So, what have we got then? Hi, right, Chris. So right. this is this is the 30th anniversary model. It's got the, as you can see, it's got the, the quilt top. We've also got some new the 30th anniversary bird inlays. It's got the HFS and the vintage bass pickup on there with the PRS trim. It's got a wide thin neck profile. We've also got the three-way control switch with also call tap on both pickups. And obviously this is the, the chestnut model with a nice quilt top and there are two other finishes. Yeah, there. that's right. There's, there's amethyst, which is a beautiful purple color and there's also the vintage sunburst version. Cool, thank you very much, mate. All right, cheers. cheers.